You live in one of the greatest states that Western civilization has ever produced. A powerful republic that encompasses an enormous expanse of land. A powerful culture and society built on strong laws and values, enshrined by constitution and which needed to be wrestled into existence through the toppling of an oppressive monarch. For years since its founding, this republic has known nothing but growth, progress, and victory. Defeating its southern neighbor, expanding its frontier, taming its savage lands, and building a society unmatched by any other on the continent. But along the line, something went wrong. The brilliant minds and courageous hearts which once led the country virtuously have now grown dull, greedy, and weak. The masses who once saw themselves as belonging to something greater than their individual lives, who would without question lay their lives down for the survival of the republic, who took pride in being a citizen of a state which worked for them and vice versa, they too have grown greedy and demand more, even if at great cost to the country as a whole. Wars have become a tool for profit and send the republic's citizens to die in farther and farther lands while unrest brews back home. Morality seems to decline further and further with every new generation. The constitution once held so high has been repeatedly crossed and dismissed as something antiquated. Worst yet, the republican system has truly begun to break down, with violence being resorted to in the streets of the country, legislative procedures being dominated by corruption and nepotism, and faith in the electoral process crumbling. The country I'm speaking of is the Roman Republic, and while many enjoy comparing Rome's empire to the United States, we find greater parallels between it and not the empire, but the republic. Many have spoken of America's decline and the possibility that it may face civil war or collapse. This kind of talk and the parallels many tend to draw between the US and Rome have led some to consider the idea of an American Caesar, a military or political strongman who will rise to prominence, secure power by force, and transform the Republic, saving it from total collapse. While imagery of an American Caesar is certainly captivating, it skips a crucial step in the emergence of a Caesar-like figure. The Rome that gave rise to Caesar saw its republican system restored to a historic level of stability, however it did so by means which created a new danger that was just as threatening to the republic's survival. Caesar certainly did have a vision for Rome, but it wasn't built upon a desire to fix the problems deeply rooted within Roman society. No, Caesar's desire was legacy, to go down in history as a ruler and conqueror greater than even Alexander the Great. Such personal ambitions had become commonplace at the time, with Caesar's prime rival of the day, the great general Gnaeus Pompeius, having desired to achieve much the same goal for much the same reason. Caesar was not the first Roman to seize the dictatorship by force. That honor goes to a man by the name of Lucius Cornelius Sulla, who witnessed the decline in Roman society previously described. Anarchy had consumed the capital and tradition was being trampled. In response, Sulla marched on Rome for the first time, took power by force, restored order, and stepped down to continue a military campaign he had been previously engaged in. In Sulla's absence, Rome relapsed and he was forced to march on Rome for a second time and seize the dictatorship for a longer duration. Sulla felt as though Rome had been corrupted and its institutions had been left incapable of governing and as such he himself would exert extreme authority to restore Rome's republic and once it appeared as though things had normalized, he stepped down, allowing the republic to continue as it had. But his actions set a precedent in the minds of ambitious men, that absolute power could be seized by those with the wills and means to seize it, thus enter Caesar and Pompey. The United States, by comparison, is not quite at a point where powerful and ambitious men with popular sway and military support are in positions to compete with one another and seize power by force. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find such a figure in modern politics or even in the military. Where America does find itself, however, is on the cusp of seeing the rise of a Sulla-like figure. Violence in America's streets motivated by politics, polarization of ideologies, a great breakdown in government legitimacy, the decline of American values, and a crash in confidence in America's election system by both political factions demonstrates a point at which a politician, general, or other figure may declare a need to restore the American system through extreme means, with a great deal of the American public in acceptance or support of this outcome. When people discuss the rise of an American Caesar, it must also not be forgotten that the rise of said Caesar will almost certainly be preceded by the rise of an American Sulla. Why this distinction is important is that it will be the Sulla-like figure under whom America can be restored to a previous more prosperous state, but if this American Sulla fails to make this change lasting by not merely repairing the laws of the country but the morality and culture of the country to one which self-corrects and self-regulates, then what follows upon his death or stepping down will be a power struggle which gives rise to the Caesar-esque figure, under whom America will not be restored, but transformed into something very different which is yet to be seen. It must also be stated that the Caesar and Sulla figures aren't necessarily bound to belong to one political faction or another. Sulla affiliated himself with the more conservative Optimate faction, while Caesar affiliated himself with the more populist Popular faction, with whom their potential American counterparts align is anyone's guess, but if the American political system continues to decline as it has, an answer may eventually make itself clear. The USFZ thanks you for watching, support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.